emojis Oh my, there I go again You don't score enough, I mean no offense Yo, what's up YouTube? It's your boy Moose and welcome back to our Houston Comets expansion draft franchise. Of course, in our last episode, we got through our inaugural season here in Houston, which not surprisingly saw our team miss the playoffs as they ended up finishing in ninth last place in the entire league. But the draft lottery gods were on our side as we of course jumped all the way up to the first overall pick where we were able to draft Connor Bedard. We then made a huge splash in free agency as we signed the top free agent available in future Hall of Famer, Patrick King. So in today's episode, we are going to go ahead and sim through the rest of the offseason and get into year two. Of course, the majority of the heavy lifting here in the offseason has been done. However, there is still one major move that I want to make before we sim ahead to next season, which is moving on from Dan Vladar. And that's because we have Uko Pekalukkanen on our team, who is now ready to take over as our number one goalie. We also have Caden Primo, who was fantastic last year on our AHL team, and he's ready to make the jump to the NHL to be our backup goalie, as he now sits at an 83 overall. So having Vladar on our team doesn't make a ton of sense anymore if we want to get both Lukanen and Primo playing time in the NHL. So I want to try to move on from Vladar for either a young player or some draft picks. And after using the trade finder feature, the best offer that we got for Vladar was this offer from the Montreal Canadiens for two second rounders, one in 2024 and one in 2025, as well as forward Oscar Sungfist. And I did try to get their 2024 first rounder guys, but they just wouldn't do it. So we are going to go ahead and take this trade package for Vladar. And we actually made another trade as well, as we had a ton of NHL ready defensemen on the team, too many in fact. So I went ahead and I traded defenseman Cal Foot and a 2024 seventh round pick to our rivals, the Dallas Stars, for young forward Mason Marchman and a third round draft pick. Always risky trading within your division, especially to our in state rivals here with the Dallas Stars, but I wanted to replace Cal Foot with a solid young forward and Mason Marchman fit the bill. Plus, turning that seventh rounder into a third rounder isn't too shabby at all. Okay, so with those trades now, made along with our Patrick Kane signing and our excellent 2023 draft class that includes superstar Connor Bedard we are pretty much done here in the offseason so I'm going to go ahead and send to our next season and of course I will show you guys any significant trades and signings that happened while I'm simming so there were only a couple of notable trades that went down David Perron was traded from the Detroit Red Wings to the Chicago Blackhawks in exchange for third and seventh round draft picks the Ottawa Senators and Philadelphia Flyers made a pretty decent trade as Ottawa picked up veteran center Scott Lawton in exchange Exchange for prospect Ridley Grigg and a 2024 fourth rounder. And then of course there was the two trades that we made. As far as notable signings during free agency, the St. Louis Blues signed Matt Dumba to a five-year deal. Sean Monaghan interestingly makes his way back to Calgary as he rejoins the Flames on a three-year deal. Your Houston Comets, of course, signed Patrick Kane to a one-year deal worth $9 million. And the Pittsburgh Penguins signed Patrice Bergeron to a one-year deal. So Sidney Crosby and Patrice Bergeron will now play together in the NHL. The Carolina Hurricanes signed Vladimir Tarasenko to a one-year contract. So Vladdy makes his way to Carolina. And the Nashville Predators signed Max Pacioretty to a two-year contract. Michael Bunting signed a long-term five-year deal with the Washington Capitals and the Seattle Kraken add to their defense core as they add Dmitry Orlov to a four-year deal. Winnipeg made a huge commitment to defenseman Scott Mayfield as they signed him to a six-year deal and Tyler Bertuzzi makes his way to Arizona as he joins the Coyotes on a six-year deal. The San Jose Sharks signed goaltender Freddie Anderson. John Klingberg went to Pittsburgh on a five-year deal so Pittsburgh adds John Klingberg on defense as well as Patrice Bergeron so this was a pretty active free agency for Pittsburgh. Jonathan Taze heads to Vegas as he joins the Golden Knights on a two-year deal. And for some reason, the Columbus Blue Jackets gave Alex Kerfoot a five-year deal. Joe Pavelski signed with the New Jersey Devils on a one-year deal, while the Chicago Blackhawks signed JVR. Okay, so those were the notable free agent signings as well as the trades that were made during the offseason. So let's go ahead and sim the last little bit of the offseason that we have left and get into year two. Okay, so here we are at the start of the regular season. And as you guys can see, our first game of the season is on the road against the Seattle Kraken. And as always, we are going to go ahead and watch our team play in their first game of the year. But before we do that, let's go ahead and go over our team captains, our pending free agents, and our team lineup. So taking a look at our captains and assistants, I've gone ahead and giving Connor Bedard one of the assistant captains. I know he hasn't actually played an NHL game yet, but I don't think there's any doubt that he is one of the leaders of this team. Sam Girard is going to be our other assistant captain. Of course, he was an assistant captain in season one. And our big free agent signing, Patrick Kane, is going to be the first captain in the history of the Houston Comets. He's our best player at 91 overall. Of course, he won multiple Stanley Cups with the Chicago Blackhawks. So I just feel like Patrick Kane is the perfect fit to be our first captain in franchise history. As far as our team contract, 
contracts and our pending UFAs and pending RFAs are concerned. We of course have a few UFAs here, Patrick Kane being the biggest one. Kasperi Kapanen is one of our other pending UFAs, and he's asking for a three-year contract worth $4.9 million a season. He's 27 years old and 83 overall, so he does fit into the potential contending window for this team. I'm not going to offer him a contract right now, but he definitely might be somebody that we look to re-sign here as we get through this season. Our other three pending UFAs are Nino Niederreiter, Oscar Sunkfist, and Hayden Fleury. Our pending RFAs are Kale Addison, Sean Jersey, Thomas Harley, Clem Costin, Michael McLeod, and Michael Rasmussen. And Thomas Harley only wants a one-year deal at 750 thou. He's 22 years old, top 4D potential, and he's already an 81 overall. So this is a no-brainer for us. We are going to go ahead and offer Thomas Harley this contract. Sean Jersey wants two years at 4.6. So let's see if we can maybe shave this down to 4.2. We'll see if he'll accept that contract. I'm okay with signing him to that. So let's go ahead and offer this contract to Sean Jersey. Looking at our goaltenders, Uko Pekka Lukanen is also a pending RFA at the end of this season. But as of right now, we can't currently offer him a contract. So we'll either offer him a contract later in the season or during the off season. And taking a look at our AHL team and players in the system, we have a ton of UFAs and a ton of RFAs here, but we'll worry about these guys later on in the off season. Taking a look at our lineup here in season number two, things are looking a lot better than they were in year one. Philip Heedle has developed into an 86 overall. Jesse Pugliarvi's up to 84 overall. And everyone in our forward group is at least an 80 overall or better. So our forward depth is looking really great. And of course, Connor Bedard and Patrick Kane on that first line should be absolutely dynamic. That's the damn show. On defense, our top pair will be Sam Girard and David Yurchek. Of course, David Yurchek is our top defense prospect in the entire team. He's only 19 years old, medium elite potential. So I'm really excited to see how David Yurchek does for us here in season number two. Thomas Harley will be playing on the second pair with Sean Dersey, and our third defense pair will be Kale Addison with Ethan Bear. In net, of course, Dan Vladar is gone after we traded him during the offseason, so Ugo Pekalukkanen is now the new number one goalie here in Houston, as he's already an 84 overall at just 24 years old. And Caden Primo, after a fantastic season in the AHL last year for the Houston Apollos, will be our backup goaltender, and he's already an 83 overall at just 24 years old as well. So we have two really really good young goaltenders here on the Houston Comets. Okay, so now that we've gone over all of that, it is now time to head into the first game here in Season 2 against the Seattle Kraken. So of course, this is a road game, so we're going to be wearing our away jerseys. And of course, this is going to be the debut of Patrick Kane on the Houston Comets, as well as Connor Bedard's NHL debut. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Welcome to Seattle. James Savalski with you here for EA Sports, and we are ready to get cracking on the ice tonight. Houston's got it in their own zone. Shot, and the puck dies with the trapper save. Moves the puck. Pugliarvi's got it along the wing. Taken by Costin. And a good save on the play as action continues. Houston's across the blue line. A chance in front! Oh, he got all of that. What a save by Drigger. That flat-out reaction, James. That puck is coming at the goaltender from the low slot. There's not much time to think. Position, reflex, is safe. And that's turned aside. Houston's looking to break out of their own end. Here's a chance! Glove save. Along the wing, up the neutral zone. Here's a short pass to Kane. Dreger's gonna cover it up and get a whistle. Puck picked up by Milano. Shot! Comes up with the stop. Grabbed along the boards by Puglia Yarvi. Oh, Trapper saved by Dreger. Boards won the draw in his own end. Now let's see if they can clear it. Scores! There it is! His first of the season, and look at the smile there! That'll do it for period number one. We'll drop the puck on the second period in just moments. Welcome back, everybody. James Sabalski with you. Period number two, the middle frame ready to go. Ray, what's your assessment of the game to this point? Seattle's details in that first period were no good. And as a result, they got to chase the game here. A little dipsy doodle, and he loses possession of the puck. Don't mind the idea, but it doesn't work. Now you got to chase. Stick save and a shoot. He scores! 
jumps on the rebound and makes a count. Into the offensive zone. Quick pass to Donskoy. Oh, he had the answer on that one. Settles things down and gets control of it once again. Takes the pass. Centering to the middle. And he shuts down a great scoring chance there. Save made by the goalie. There's a collision with some authority. The boards. Seattle's on the attack. Takes the shot. Stops him cold. And they'll battle for that loose puck along the boards. Moves inside. Oh, what a save in front. Here's a pass in front. Oh, and he comes up with a stop. There's the horn, 40 minutes in the books. We'll get a refresh for both the players. Ice, back with a third period next. Both teams seem fresh after that second intermission. We're ready to drop the puck on period number three. Houston's got it in their own zone. The kid's looking for his first. Oh, solid save by Drieger. He's working hard to find this puck. There's all kinds of traffic in front of him, and he gets to it before the puck gets to him. And a huge stop by the goaltender at point-blank range. But he came out and challenged him. Good save. Scrum along the boards. Tries to feed it over to Larson. Oh, here we go. This team knows how to turn it up another gear, and they have done that here. Into the offensive end now. Takes a shot. Off the glove, but the puck skips away. Grabbed along the board by Burakovsky. Turned aside with the glove by Lukanen. The Comets pick up steam and are on the attack. Shot! Big time save by Drieger. Along the half wall with the puck. The pass out front! And that's stopped! Here's a short pass to McCann. They need a goal here. They've got the extra attacker out on the ice. Lukanen's gonna opt for the whistle and give everybody a chance to breathe. Rocked on the play. Did he ever? Fires it down the ice. He scores! Wow, what timing! Didn't take very long. First career game, first career goal. by Addison. Put it towards the net. They score! James, how many timeouts can you have? Because they need one now. They needed one before. And the way this is going, they're going to need one in a few minutes. The Comets win possession here in the open ice. The final horn sounds! The freshman sensation scores. The team wins. Well, hope to see you down the road real soon as we say goodbye here from ringside tonight. From all of us here at EA Sports, I'm James Sabalski. Good night. So that was a great game by the Houston Comets here to start year number two. Connor Bedard gets his first career goal in his first career game. Patrick Kane scores in his Houston Comets debut. Both Mason Marchman and David Yurichek get two assists. And Uko Pekalukinen gets a shutout in his first game as the official number one goalie on the team. So we checked a lot of boxes off in that game as the Houston Comets look great to start the year. All right, so with our season opener now complete, a huge 4-0 victory against the Seattle Kraken. We, of course, have two pending contract offers to Sean Jersey and Thomas Harley. So let's go ahead and sim a couple days and see if they'll accept their contract offers. All right, so Sean Jersey has accepted his contract offer and Thomas Harley has also accepted his contract. So that's two really good young defensemen locked up past this season. And as you guys can see, we got another 4-0 victory against the Vegas golden knights so that's back-to-back -back shutouts to start our season and our rookie sensation connor bedard scored another goal so he has goals in back-to-back -back games to start his nhl career that's what i'm talking about and how about uko pekka lukin in with back-to-back -back shutouts to start the year so our new franchise goalie is off to a great start all right so with our season opener now done and thomas harley and sean jersey both signing their contract extensions you guys already know the drill let's go ahead and sim about the next month of the season and see how the boys are doing
Okay, so after simming the first month or so, we have played 13 games to a record of 7, 4, and 2. We currently sit in 4th place in the Central Division, 1 point ahead of the Minnesota Wild, and 4 points back of the Chicago Blackhawks. Patrick Kane is off to an amazing start with the Houston Comets, as he's our current leading scorer through 13 games, as he has 22 points with 12 goals and 10 assists. And Connor Bedard has been great to start his NHL career, as he's over a point per game with 17 points in 13 games played, with 8 goals and 9 assists. And our rookie defenseman David Yurchek is also off to a really good start as he has a plus eight rating as well as seven points in 13 games with one goal and six assists. And Uko Pekka Lukanen and Caden Primo have actually split their starts fairly evenly as Lukanen has played in eight games while Primo has played in five. And how about Caden Primo with a record of 4-1-0? and oh? However, his save percentage at 890 and his goals against at 380, I would like to see both of those numbers improve a little bit. Uko Pekka Lukanen meanwhile has a record of 3-3-2 and two to go along with two shutouts and a decent nine 905 save percentage and a pretty solid 2.82 goals against average. So overall, a pretty good start here for the Houston Comets here in season two. So now let's go ahead and sim about another month or so. Alright, so here we are in the middle of December. We are 30 games into our season. The Houston Comets have a solid record of 16, 11, and 3, which is good enough for 5th place in the Central Division. And we're currently sitting in a playoff spot, as you guys can see that blue star beside our name. We are only 1 point ahead of the National Predators, however, who sit at 34 points. But we're also only 1 point back of both the Chicago Blackhawks and the Arizona Coyotes. So this is shaping up to be quite a race here in the Central Division. Patrick Kane is still our leading scorer as he has 53 points in 30 games with 29 goals and 24 assists. So Patrick Kane is fitting in perfectly here with the Houston Comets. And Connor Bedard, what can you say? The kid's killing it. He's got 42 points in 30 games played with 15 goals and 27 assists. And the offense has fallen off a little bit for David Yurichek, our top rookie defenseman, as he's got 11 points in 30 games with two goals and nine assists. But he's got that really solid plus 13 rating, so he's been a great two-way defenseman for us so far during his rookie season. Uko Pekulukadin got the majority of the starts in that last sim, as he now sits at 20 games played compared to Caden Primo's 10. And he's really struggled, actually, as he has a record of 8, 10, and 2. He does have three shutouts, but he's got a save percentage of 886 and a goals against average of 3.49. So hopefully he can turn it around here as the season goes on. But Caden Primo is definitely making his case to be the potential starter here in the second half of the season. As in just 10 games played, he has an 8-1-1 record to go along with a really good 9-11 save percentage and a 287 goals against average. 9-11. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we are going to go ahead and we are going to sim up right to the trade deadline. Actually, I'm going to sim up to the day before the trade deadline. Of course, as we saw, it is an extremely tight race here in the Central Division. So as long as the boys are still contending, we have a really good record. We could potentially be buyers here at the trade deadline. All right, let's go ahead and sim. All right, so here we are one day before the NHL trade deadline. We had a bit of an up and down sim there. Our record is still over 500 as we have a record of 29, 25, and 8. Again, it's a really tight race here in the Central Division as we currently sit in 6th place with 66 points. But as you can see, the Chicago Blackhawks in 3rd place, they are sitting with just 69 points. So we're only 3 points out of 3rd place in the division. So right now, we're kind of that fringe team. We're not currently in a playoff spot, but we are just on the outside looking in. So we've got a bit of a tough decision decision to make. Do we act as sellers here at the deadline? Or do we buy and try to give our team a better shot at making the playoffs? Or do we maybe stand pat and just do nothing? Sometimes the best move is no move. Do what must be done. And we did have one pretty major injury during that simulation as Uko Pekalukinen went down with an MCL sprain. So he's been out for about the last month or so. Patrick Kane is well on his way to a 100 point season here as he has 91 points in 62 games played, including 45 goals and 46 assists. And Connor Bedard has already reached 77 points in just 62 games as he's already got a 30 goal season under his belt as he sits at 33 goals 
to go along with 44 assists. And our young two-way defenseman David Yurichek has 17 points in 50 games played with 4 goals and 13 assists. And with Lukanen injured, Caden Primo has taken over as the starter of this team. So he's now played in 33 games and he has a great record of 18-8-5 with a very respectable 9-14 save percentage and 2.79 goals against average. So we may have to stick with Caden Primo as our starter over Lukanen even when he comes back from injury. It could work! As we take a look at our pending free agents before we head into the trade deadline, Patrick Kane still has no under contract extension, but I don't care. We are not trading Patrick Kane, obviously. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and try to offer him a contract. He wants one year at 10.6. Of course, we're going to have to probably offer him a little bit more since he doesn't want an extension. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to offer him $11 million on the dot. He's had a great year here. So I want him here for at least one more season. All right. So he's going to consider that and get back to it shortly. Kasperi Kapanen only wants two years at 3.6 mil. So let's go ahead and offer Kasperi Kapanen this contract. All right. Perfect. So I don't think we're going to make a ton of moves at the deadline, but I do think we're going to make one big move. Nino Niederreiter does not want an extension and he's 31 years old. So I don't think this is somebody that we're going to resign. I'm going to package Nino Niederreiter along with young players and prospects and we're going to try to upgrade Nino Niederreiter and get like a top line winger that we can pair with Connor Bedard and Patrick Kane. So in a sense we're going to buy and sell at the same time. All right, let's go ahead and make our way into the trade deadline. And holy, as you guys can see there, the Carolina Hurricanes are potentially going to move on from Sebastian Ajo. That would be kind of insane. Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? You got Jeremy Swayman on the trade block, Jared Spurgeon. Tavo Teravainen is also available from the Carolina Hurricanes. Evgeny Kuznetsov is available from the Washington Capitals. So some pretty big names available there, but all right, let's try to go ahead and make our move. We're going to try to package Nino Niederreiter, our pending UFA, along with some prospects to try to get a number one winger that we can put on the first line with Connor Bedard and Patrick Kane. And honestly, Tavo Teravainen here on Carolina could be a really good option for us. He's 87 overall, 29 years old. He is on an expiring contract, but that's all right. He's got stick him up zone ability as well as a bunch of superstar ability. So yeah, I could really see Tivo Teravainen fitting in really well on that first line with Connor Bedard and Patrick Kane. So let's go ahead and see if we can put together a trade package for Teravainen. All right, so the first offer that I'm going to give Carolina is Nino Niederreiter prospect John Beecher as well as a 2025 fourth rounder in exchange for Tara Vinen and some random AHL player in or that I had to toss in to make this trade work I don't necessarily expect them to accept this but let's see what they say yeah so unsurprisingly they've rejected that trade offer so let's go ahead and change this fourth rounder into a third rounder all right let's see what they say to that they're still going to reject that offer okay all right so I'm going to add that fourth rounder back to the trade as well as keeping the third rounder in there and they've still rejected that offer. Man, that's crazy. That just makes no fucking sense. I mean, it's just bullshit. We do have two second rounders in next year's draft. So maybe we can give up one of these second rounders. I will say this though. If we give up a second rounder here in this trade, I am going to have to get Tara Vine and signed to an extension in order to make this trade worth it. All right, let's see what they say to this trade offer. Nino Niederreiter, Beecher, and a second rounder. And let's go. They've accepted the offer. I actually feel really good about that trade. So we've got 87 overall Tavo Teravainen coming to the Houston Comets. We gave up Nino Niederreiter, who we were going to trade no matter what. John Beecher was kind of a whatever prospect. We've got a lot better prospects than him in our system, so I don't mind giving him up. And then giving up the second rounder kind of sucks, but hey, you got to give up a lot to get a lot. So that's probably all we're going to do here at the trade deadline. We're just going to make that one move, but it was a pretty significant move. So I think we did a pretty good job moving on from Nino Niederreiter while still acting as buyers and giving our team a really solid chance down the stretch here by by adding a player like Tara Vinen. All right, so with the trade deadline now complete, let's go ahead and take a look at all the top trades during the deadline. And starting off, we've got a pretty massive trade between the Montreal Canadiens and the Philadelphia Flyers. So the Montreal Canadiens acquired defenseman Tony D'Angelo, as well as a third round pick from the Philadelphia Flyers in exchange for top prospect Edward Sale and Matthias Lack. The Montreal Canadiens then made another trade as they acquired veteran forward Jakob Silverberg and a fifth round pick from the Anaheim Ducks in exchange for prospects Jan Mysak and Nico Minkinen. The Winnipeg Jets and Calgary Flames made a trade as the Winnipeg Jets picked up Blake Coleman and a sixth rounder in exchange for Rucker McGordy and defenseman Brendan Dillon. Of course, we made one of the biggest trades at the trade deadline as we went ahead and got Tavo Teravainen and prospect Robert Orr from the Carolina Hurricanes in exchange for Nino Niederreiter, John Beecher, and a second rounder in 2025. The Dallas Stars then made a trade with the Washington Capitals as they got forward Michael Bunting as well as a fifth round pick and winger Joe Snively in exchange for three prospects 
prospects in Bischel, Serato, and Burmistrov. The San Jose Sharks acquired defenseman Shane Gostaspear from the Carolina Hurricanes in exchange for center Nico Sturm and a third rounder in 2025. The Tampa Bay Lightning and the St. Louis Blues made a pretty big trade here guys as Tampa Bay acquired forwards Jakob Vrana and Thomas Tatar as well as defenseman Robert Bertuzzo in exchange for prospect Isaac Howard and a 2025 second rounder. And then in our final trade during the trade deadline the Columbus Blue Jackets acquired veteran defenseman Oliver Ekman Larson as well as a third round pick from Vancouver in exchange for defensive prospect Carson Kuhlemans. So all in all, a pretty interesting trade deadline. Nothing too crazy, but we had some pretty decent trades. And how perfect is this? Tavo Teravainen, who we just acquired at the deadline, he has yes under extension, so he is interested in re-signing here with the Houston Comets. And he just wants a one-year deal at $6.725 million a season. So that's perfect. We don't have to commit to him over a long period of time. So let's go ahead and offer him this contract extension. Of course, we also have pending contract extension offers to both Patrick Kane and Kasperi Kapanen. So let's go ahead and sim a few days and let's see what these three players say to their contract offers. And boom, Patrick Kane has decided to accept his contract offer here with Houston. So Patrick Kane is going to be running it back here with the Houston Comets next year. Kasperi Kapanen has also decided to accept his contract extension. So he's back for another two years at like 3.4, 3.5, something like that. And Tavo Teravainen has also accepted his contract extension. So he's coming back on a one-year deal worth $6.7 million a season. So there he is, Tavo Teravainen on that first line along with Connor Bedard and Patrick Kane. So that first line is looking nasty. Mason Marchment moves down to the second line to play along with Philip Heedle and Jesse Pugliarvi. And I'm really liking that second line a lot. Our third line is now Frank Vitrano, Oscar Sungfist, and Kasperi Kapp. Happening, while our fourth line is Clem Costin, Michael McLeod, and Matthew Joseph. No changes to our defense as we still have Gerard Yurchek on the first pair, Harley and Sean Jersey on the second pair, and Kale Addison and Ethan Bear on that third defense pair. And like I mentioned, we are going to keep Caden Primo in that starter spot. Uko Pekalukinen is making his return from injury, but he is going to be the backup now as Caden Primo has earned that starter spot. All right, so with the trade deadline now done, let's go ahead and sim the rest of the regular season and see if we make the playoffs. And oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, we ended up missing the playoffs. As you guys can see, we ended up with a record of 37, 35, and 10, which was sixth place in the Central Division. We missed the playoffs by just one point. As you see, the Chicago Blackhawks got one of those final playoff spots there as they finished with 85 points to our 84 points. So that is extremely disappointing. I really thought we were going to sneak into the playoffs. We had a really tough end to our season. So we had a loss against Boston, a loss against Vancouver, overtime loss to Philly, lost to Pittsburgh, lost to Columbus, lost to Winnipeg, an overtime loss to the Islanders, and then we won against the Arizona Coyotes to end our season. So we ended up losing seven out of our last eight games to end the season, and we only missed the playoffs by one point. So literally, if we had even just won one of those games there, we would have made the playoffs. Shit, boy. So that is really unlucky, but I think we made great strides this season. And you know what? We ended up extending Tevu Teravine to a one-year deal as well as Patrick Kane to a one-year deal. So we are going to be able to run it back with that first line again next year. So I think our Houston Comets are trending in the right direction, even though this was a devastating way to miss the playoffs here in season two. So Patrick Kane ended up being our leading scorer with 102 points in a full season with 82 games played as he had a 50 goal season along with 52 assists. Connor Bedard was over a point per game in his rookie season as he had 83 points in 78 games played and he had 36 goals to go along with 47 assists. So he is definitely the future of this franchise. Taking a look at Tara Vinan's stats during his time here with Houston, he was all right. He put up 12 points in 20 games played for us as he scored four times with eight assists. So not too bad, but I definitely expect more out of him next season as he will have a full season playing with Connor Bedard and Patrick Kane. David Yerchek ended up playing 70 games as he put up 21 points points with five goals and 16 assists. 
So a pretty solid rookie season for our defenseman, David Yerichek. Can't complain about that. In net, Caden Primo ended up playing 45 games as he had a winning record of 21, 15, and 6 with a really solid 913 save percentage and a 289 goals against. And unfortunately, Uko Pekka Lukanen was immediately injured upon his return, so he only ended up playing in 30 games with a record of 10, 16, and 3 with a really tough 879 save percentage and 3.76 goals against average. So a bit of a lost season for Uko Pekka Lukanen, but he's still just 25 years old at the end of the season, so I still have really high hopes for him going forward. David Pasternak was the leading scorer in the NHL this year with 103 points to go with 46 goals and 57 assists. As he just squeaked out Patrick Kane as the leading scorer, of course, Patrick Kane had 102 points as he scored 50 goals with 52 assists. Brad Marchand was the third leading scorer in the league this year with his 99 points, which was one ahead of Connor McDavid who had 98 and three ahead of Nathan McKinnon who had 96 points. And wow, look at this, ladies and gentlemen, our top goal scorers of the regular season. Cole Caulfield ended up finishing with 60 goals on the season. So he scored 60 times in 77 games. That is unbelievable. Alexander Ovechkin finished with 58 goals and Patrick Kane finished with 50. And that's back-to-back 58 goal seasons here for Alex Ovechkin in our two seasons of our Houston Comets franchise, which gives him 896 career goals, which is two more than Wayne Gretzky's career total of 894, as Ovechkin now passes Wayne Gretzky to become the most prolific goal scorer in NHL history. boy, Ovi. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Taking a look at the rookie scoring race, Connor Bedard blew the rest of the rookies out of the water as he of course had 83 points in 78 games as that was 27 more points than the next closest rookie scorer which was Alexander Vasilev who had 56 points. But he matched Connor Bedard with 36 goals, so that's really impressive there from Vasilev. Adam Fantilli was the third highest scoring rookie during the season with the San Jose Sharks, as he put up 54 points in 82 games with 28 goals and 26 assists. The fourth leading rookie scorer was Darupos, the guy that I can't pronounce his name, as he put up 53 points with the LA Kings. And Matt Vaymichkov, who was taken second overall after Connor Bedard by the National Predators, he had a pretty solid season as he put up 49 points in 79 games with a really solid 30 goals. But I I don't think there's any doubt who's going to take home the Calder this year as Connor Bedard was by far the best rookie during this season. Taking a look at our top goaltenders during the season, Vita Vanacek had a great year with the New Jersey Devils as he played in 66 games with an outstanding record of 41-20-3 to go along with a whopping 5 shutouts with a sparkling 917 save percentage and 2.53 goals against average. Alexander Gorgiev also had a really good season as he had a record of 40-17-5. And, and Casey DeSmith was your other goalie to get 40 wins as he had a record of 40-21-2 with a 9.06 and 2.75. And your top five teams during the regular season were the New Jersey Devils as they finished with 111 points and 53 wins. The Colorado Avalanche, of course, finished with 109 points with 50 wins. The Montreal Canadiens killed it as they were the third top team in the league this year as they had 108 points with 50 wins as well. And the Pittsburgh Penguins finished with 51 wins good enough for 105 points and the buffalo sabers and dallas stars both finished with 101 points each as they had 48 and 47 wins respectively and your houston comets ended up finishing in 22nd place which is 12th last place in the nhl which really sucks because i believe only the bottom 11 teams have an opportunity to move up to first overall in the draft lottery so we find ourselves just out of the playoffs by one point as well as just one point out of draft lottery contention Taking a look now at our AHL team, the boys had another great year as they finished with a 48-31-3 record, which was obviously good enough to make the playoffs. Felipe Richardson, one of our top prospects on the entire team, was the leading scorer in the AHL this season as he put up 67 points in 82 games with 28 goals and 39 assists. He's up to an 80 overall, so Felipe Richardson is definitely someone we are going to see on the NHL team next season. After leading our AHL team in scoring last year, Alexi Hapaniemi had another pretty decent season as he had 63 points in 82 games. And Kasper Heltunen, who was of course our other first rounder in the 2023 draft, he had an okay season in his first year in the AHL as he had 27 points in 54 games played with 16 goals and 11 assists. Noah Valley, who is our potential goalie of the future, he appeared in 27 games as he put together a record of 14, 10, and 1 with 5 shutouts to go along with a 901 save percentage and a 2.64. 
So that's a great first season in the AHL for Noah Volley. So the Houston Apollos will be taking on Utica here in the first round of the AHL playoffs. They are, of course, the New Jersey Devils AHL affiliate. So let's go ahead and see how the boys do. And once again, like last season, the Houston Apollos find themselves tied 2-2 two two here in their first round matchup after the first four games. So let's go ahead and slow sim the rest of this first round series. All right, so here we are in game number five. Let's go ahead and sim the first period. And after the first period, the game is tied 1-1 one one as LeBurge gets the goal for Utica while Alexi Hepiniemi gets the goal for the Houston Apollos. Simming period number two here, we are still tied. It is now two to two after two periods as Anders Bjork gets the goal for the Houston Apollos while Poole gets the goal for Utica. And after simming the third period, the Houston Apollos take home the game five victory as Alexi Hepiniemi scores on the power play to give the Houston Apollos the win here in game number five as they take a three to two series lead. As we go ahead now and sim the first period here in game number six, the Houston Apollos find themselves up one to nothing as Kiefer Bellows gets the goal for the Apollos as they take the early lead here in game number six. Simming period number two, the Houston Apollos score three times here in the second as they go up four to nothing as they get goals from Himosami, Murray and Morrison going ahead in simming period number three now the Houston Apollo score one more time as they take the game six victory five to nothing as Toropchenko scores for the Apollos as they take down Utica here in six games and move on to the second round of the AHL playoffs so the Houston Apollos are now moving on to face the Toronto Marlies in the second round and as we take a look at the NHL bracket while we're simming through here in the AHL playoffs, you got Edmonton versus Vegas and Colorado versus Nashville in the West, while the Pittsburgh Penguins take on the Washington Capitals and the Montreal Canadiens play the Boston Bruins in the East. All right, so here we are in our second round matchup against the Toronto Marlies. So let's go ahead and sim the first four games of the series and see how the boys are doing. And we are once again tied two to two after four games here in our second round matchup. So that just seems to be the way things go here. After four games, we're just going to be tied two to two every single time every damn time and instead of slow simming game number five let's just go ahead and sim it and let's see where we're at so we take a 4-1 victory over the toronto marlies in game number five and we are now up three to two so now let's go ahead and slow sim game number six all right so simming the first period here in game number six the toronto marlies jump out to their early one nothing lead as sam lafferty gets the goal Simming period number two, the Toronto Marlies stay ahead by one goal as Joel Svensson gets the power play goal for the Houston Apollos while Petila scores for the Toronto Marlies. And after simming the third period, the Toronto Marlies secure their victory here in game number six as Sam Lafferty gets his second goal of the game. Here now in the do or die game number seven here as we sim period number one, we stay deadlocked at a 0-0 score as neither team scores. Simming period number two, we once again stay in a tieless score as neither team can break through here during the first 40 minutes, as we are going to head to this do-or-die game number seven, deadlocked at zero. Going ahead and sitting period number three, the Toronto Marlies score the only goal as Petila gets the goal. And for the second year in a row, the Toronto Marlies eliminate the Houston Apollos from the AHL playoffs. Oh man, that's too bad, but what can you do? We shall double our efforts. All right, so with our AHL team now eliminated from playoff contention, we take a look here at the playoff bracket here in the NHL. So you got the Vegas Golden Knights up two games to nothing against the Colorado Avalanche in the Western Conference Finals, while the Pittsburgh Penguins and Boston Bruins are tied one to one in the Eastern Conference Finals. So the Boston Bruins are looking for back to back Stanley Cups here, as they of course won the Stanley Cup last year. And they are going up against their former captain in Patrice Bergeron, as he of course signed with the Pittsburgh Penguins during the offseason. All right, let's go ahead and sim the rest of the NHL playoffs. And the Pittsburgh Penguins end up being our Stanley Cup champions here in season number two. And as you can see, the Penguins ended up defeating the Boston Bruins in six games in the Eastern Conference Finals, as they then went on to face Vegas in the Stanley Cup Final, where they took down the Golden Knights in a thrilling seven-game series. So after signing Patrice Bergeron during the offseason, the Penguins end up winning the whole thing, as Sidney Crosby gets his fourth Stanley Cup in his career. So taking a look at the awards here at the end of the season, the Pittsburgh Penguins are, of course, your Stanley Cup champions, and the New Jersey Devils were the President's Trophy winners, as they had the best record at 
the end of the regular season. David Pasternak won the Art Ross Trophy as the leading scorer during the regular season, as of course he beat Patrick Kane by one point with 103. Brad Marchand was the MVP this season as he took home the Hart Memorial Trophy. Rasmus Dahlin is once again the top defenseman of the year as he wins the Norris Trophy for the second season in a row. And Patrick Kane takes home the very first award in the history of the Houston Comets franchise as he takes home the Lady Bing Trophy. And Connor Bedard takes home our second trophy here during award season as he wins the Calder Trophy as this year's top rookie. No surprises there. B E A beautiful. Evgeny Malkin won the Conn Smythe Trophy as he was the MVP for the Penguins on their way to winning the Stanley Cup. And Eric Comrie won the Vesna Trophy for the Buffalo Sabres as he ends up being the top goalie during the season. I don't think anybody would have predicted that one. Absolutely nobody! And Cole Caulfield took home the Maurice Richard Trophy as he was the leading goal scorer during the season. All right, so here we are at the beginning of the offseason, right before the NHL draft and the draft lottery results. So before we get into all that, let's go ahead and take a look at this year's draft class. So wow, you got a couple of franchise potential players here at the top of the draft. You got Daniel Keefe, the defenseman. He's an offensive defenseman. He is six foot four at 193 pounds. And he's looking like an absolute stud. He's got heat seeker zone ability, as well as a full complement of superstar abilities. So whoever gets that first overall pick is definitely going to be getting a stud here. But you've got another potential franchise player here in Aaron Kivaharju. He's also a defenseman, but his play style is two-way defense. He stands at six feet tall at 177 pounds. And it doesn't appear as though he has a zone ability, but he does have a full complement of superstar abilities. So he's got back at you, yoink, thunderclap, tape to tape, and off the rush. You've also got a trio of elite potential prospects here of course it's very unlikely that we're going to be able to jump up to draft any of these guys there is an outside chance that we can jump up to the second overall pick but again it's extremely unlikely and the other thing that we're going to do here before we get into the draft lottery and the actual nhl draft we are going to go ahead and fire some of our coaching staff including our head coach biega we missed the playoffs by one point even after acquiring a player like tara vinen at the deadline so i think this is the right time to move on from our head coach and bring in a new perspective and style of play. And we're also going to fire our goalie coach Burrish as he has a D- minus overall. And I think he's a big reason why Uko Pekalukunen had a tough year this year. So taking a look at our top options for our next head coach, you've got three coaches here who have an A- minus overall. So we've got Leonardo Holt and his teaching specialty is forwards. You've got Patrick Parrish and his teaching specialty is veterans. And our other option here is Dean Manderville and his teaching specialty is generalist. And we've got really good players all over our roster. We've got good young goaltenders, good young defensemen, and good young forwards. So I think Manderville is the best option to be our next NHL head coach due to the fact that he's a generalist. So I'm going to go ahead and offer Dean Manderville a contract to be the next head coach of the Houston Comets. And the other head coach that we were looking at, Leonardo Holt, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to offer him a contract to be our next NHL goalie coach. And as you can see, we also have to hire an assistant coach for our AHL team. And I'm going to offer that role to Louis Brule, who has an overall of B-. minus. All right, so let's zoom ahead and check out the results of the NHL draft lottery. And the St. Louis Blues jump up to the first overall pick as they jump up from the sixth overall spot. And they will be followed by the Ottawa Senators picking at number two. Winnipeg falls from number one to number three. The San Jose Sharks will be picking at number four. And the New York Rangers will be picking at number five. And of course, your Houston Comets will be picking at number 12. And let's go. Dean Manderville has accepted his contract offer to be our next head coach. So we now have a head coach with an A- minus overall rating. So that should really help our team next season in year number three. Louis Brule has rejected his offer as he doesn't like the size of our team's market. And Leonardo Holt has also rejected his offer as he also doesn't like the size of our team's market. A classic EA Sports logic. EA Sports. It's only game. All right, so we will have to wait until after the NHL draft to go ahead and offer another contract for our next goalie coach. So let's get into the 2024 NHL draft. Okay, so we of course have the 12th overall pick in this year's draft. So let's go ahead and sim through the first five picks and see how things play out. So with the first overall pick, the St. Louis Blues take Keith the third. He's 78 overall with high franchise potential. So a great pick for the St. Louis Blues as they now have a franchise player to build around. With the second overall pick, the Ottawa Senators take defenseman Kiwi Haru. He's an 80 overall with medium franchise potential. So he's medium franchise potential as opposed to Keefe who is high franchise potential, but he's got a higher overall at 80. So you really couldn't go wrong with one of those top two picks. With the third overall pick, the Winnipeg Jets took Celebrini. He's a 76 overall with high elite potential. So a pretty solid pick 
there from Winnipeg. With the fourth overall pick, the San Jose Sharks took centerman Katon. He's also 76 overall with high elite potential. And rounding out our top five picks, what an unbelievable pick here from the New York Rangers as they walk away with winger Ty Fell, who is an 81 overall with medium elite potential. So that is actually the highest overall out of all of our top five picks. So a great pick there from the New York Rangers at number five. All right, so here we are with the number 12 overall pick. So let's go ahead and take a look at all of our options. And right away, I can already see the guy that we are going to take. It is the guy at the top of the list here in Alexander Zetterberg. As you can see, our scouts are completely accurate on his potential. So he is going to be a medium elite prospect. And he's got the zone ability of third eye, as well as four superstar abilities, ankle breaker, elite edges, make it snappy and tape to tape. So we are going to go ahead and take him with our 12th overall pick. He is a 77 overall with medium elite potential. So that is a great pick here at 12th overall. Zetterberg is going to be an absolute stud for us. Here now in round number two, this is going to be the first out of two second rounders that we have in this year's draft. And with this pick, I'm going to take the Slovakian defenseman, Jakub Kromiak. And it's another really solid pick here. He is that medium top 4D potential. He's a 69 overall, so I'm really happy with that pick. And with our second and final second round pick here in the 2024 NHL draft, I am going to go ahead and take Finnish winger Marku Kako. And he played in a really solid league last year in the SHL, which has a strength of competition of A+. And he was able to put up two goals and one assist in 24 games. So I think he could be a pretty solid player for us. And it's another solid pick for us as he has a 64 overall with medium top six potential. So we are well on our way here to having another great draft. So here we are now in round number three. And once again, we have two picks in this round. And we are going to take another defenseman here as we are going to take a shot on Finnish defenseman UC Soa Minen. He's a two-way defenseman and he stands at six foot one, 188 pounds. So he ends up having medium top six potential and he's 63 overall. So that's a pretty decent pick here in the third round. I can't really complain. And with our second third round pick in this year's draft, I'm going to go ahead and take a goalie prospect here. So we've got Swedish prospect Kali Klefbaum, and our scouts believe him to have medium starter potential. And unfortunately, we completely miss on this pick. He only has medium backup potential, and he's a 58 overall. So that's a little disappointing there, but we've been having a great draft so far. So we'll just move on from that. And we actually only have one more pick here to make in the 2024 NHL draft, and it is going to be a sixth round pick. And I'm going to use this pick on the left winger out of Finland, Mika Saikola. We missed again. He's got medium bottom six potential, 57 overall. So he's probably not going to be a factor for our Houston Comets in this expansion mode. Again, what can you do? It's always a gamble here in the later rounds. So there is our 2024 NHL draft class. So we took Zetterberg at number 12 overall, defenseman Jakob Kromiak at number 45, Kako at number 64, Suo Minen at number 78, Klefbaum at number 91, and then of course we ended things by taking Saikola at 177. So taking a look at our team contracts, I've gone ahead and I've offered entry-level contracts to Zetterberg, Kromiak, Suaminen, and Kako. Taking a look at our UFAs, we've got Oscar Sungfist. He's 30 years old at 80 overall. Again, we've got some players like Felipe Richardson who are going to be making the jump from the AHL to the NHL for next season. So I'm going to go ahead and release Oscar Sungfist. I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to release Hayden Fleury. He is a pretty decent defenseman at 27 years old and 80 overall. But again, we can probably sign somebody better in free agency. And we also have some pretty good young defensemen in the AHL. So we're going to release him. And I'm also going to release both Anders Bjork and Lars Omark. They both have bottom six potential, so they don't really fit into the picture for this team going forward, so I'm going to go ahead and release both of them. Christian Fisher at 27 years old and only 78 overall. I also don't really think he fits into the long-term picture for this team, so I'm going to go ahead and move on from Christian Fisher. So now we got Rivera and Komatov as our only pending UFAs, and I'm going to go ahead and offer contracts to both of these players. As far as all of our RFAs are concerned, there's no one here that I'm going to move on from. I'm going to go ahead and offer contracts to every single one of our RFAs. Going ahead and looking at our goalies now, Uko Pekka Lukanen is a pending restricted free agent. Of course, he really struggled this year, so let's go ahead and see what he's asking for. And he only wants a one-year deal at 2.675. If I add a second year to this contract offer, his asking price goes up to $3 million. So we're just going to pay him a little bit more now. 
to protect ourselves from having to potentially pay a lot more money for him next offseason. And I'm going to go ahead and offer contracts to both Lindbergh and Clefbaum to fill out our goalie depth. And the majority of our contracts to our pending RFAs are pretty insignificant, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this one signing here with Kalen Addison. So again, we're not going to commit to Kalen Addison, but we are going to give him a pretty decent contract here worth $4 million. So Kalen Addison has agreed to his contract extension, so he's going to be coming back to the Houston Comets for at least one more year. Uko Pekalukkanen has signed his two-year deal. Our top pick in this year's draft at number 12 overall, Alexander Zetterberg has agreed to his entry-level contract. And we actually had a few of our RFAs reject their contract offers, so Michael McLeod being the main one. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to offer a qualifying offer to every single one of these RFAs. All right, so now that our contracts are taken care of, I've gone ahead and I've simmed to free agency. And we, of course, still have to hire a goalie coach. So let's go ahead and do that now. And I'm going to go ahead and offer the role of our NHL goalie coach to Wyatt Melnick. He's got an A- minus overall, and his teaching specialty is defense. Taking a look at our top free agents available, this is an absolutely stacked free agent class. So you've got 91 overall Sebastian Aho, You got 87 overall Sam Reinhart. 88 overall William Nylander. So the Toronto Maple Leafs have allowed William Nylander to walk as a free agent. Damn! You've also got Patrice Bergeron, who is going to be a free agent now in back-to-back -back seasons. And then you've got some solid guys like Tyson Berry, Jonathan Marcheseau, Jack Roslovich, and guys like that. But that is where I'm going to end things today. I'm going to leave today's episode off on a cliffhanger. And I want you guys to let me know down in the comments below, who do you want to see us go after here in free agency? Should we make a big move and bring in one of the top guys like Sebastian Aho or William Nylander? Should we sign a veteran guy like Patrice Bergeron, who is coming off a Stanley Cup win with the Pittsburgh Penguins? Or should we keep it low key here this offseason, save our cap space, and just make some small moves here and there? As of right now, William Nylander is looking pretty enticing to me in free agency, but you guys let me know what you want to see. I think next season, our goal is definitely going to be to make the playoffs, as I think our team is beginning to enter their competitive window. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, moose out.